Today on the show, strategy plus action equals thriving in transition. Great coaches and consultants like you have the ability to change people's lives and transform entire organizations. And your impact can often go far beyond the clients you work with. One of the reasons I love working with coaches and consultants is because of that ripple effect. This show is here to highlight your expertise and empower you with resources and new ideas to grow your business. Welcome to Strategy in Action. Lisa Kipps Brown is on the show today, and I'm so excited to to bring this interview to you. We have this great discussion around thriving in you know these transition times, whether that's you know being at a certain point in your business, or, and you know something's got to change, <laughs> or if you're in, in business and a lot of things are changing, Lisa's expertise is guiding you through that. Now she she works with entrepreneurs usually, um, but even with that specificity, how she helps people um, really kind of runs the gamut. You know, from helping those business owners, you know, transition, either bring in you know new technology, design their business around that, or help them you know put some systems in place so that they can either remove themselves from that business or set things up so that you know they can sell that business in a few years time whatever those different transitions are she even helps folks you know who have retired and they're in that stage of life you know what i'd really like to to start my own thing um to bring my expertise to to the world and so now they're transitioning to that well lisa helps with with all of that we we have a great discussion around all of it and her books and podcasts and everything. So let's jump in. Welcome to the show, Lisa Kipps Brown. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Yes, absolutely. And thank you. I had the the great honor of being on your show last, was that last week? Yeah, I think it was. (laughs) Yeah, yes, it was. Almost seems like Uh a lifetime ago already. I know it does. (laughs) So I, I'm really excited to, to have you on. Um, we got connected through Steve Sims group there, um, his his distillery group, which is just a blast. Obviously, Steve Sims is a phenomenal guy. Um, so any anytime that's a connection point or anybody who's amazing in our networks is just like saying, hey, you two should meet. I'm always up for it. Once again, you know, so happy that I I listened to that and (laughs) you responded, had a blast. Me too. Me too. It was so much fun having you on the show last week. I felt like I'd known you forever. So, oh, I know. It's it's such a blast. Just like, I think we should do this every week, just record it or not. Like, let's just hop on a call. This is so much fun. Sounds good to me. (laughs) (laughs) So, getting to know you more and and what you do for folks, I thought Mm -hmm. you know the the perfect topic for us to to kind of dive in around is this idea of of thriving in transition, right? Uh huh. And that's a huge topic, right? You know, it yeah. could be, you know, for you specifically, I know you are really specific to, to helping entrepreneurs in that. Uh-huh. But even with, with that focus, there's a huge gamut, right? Of, of yeah. how you help those folks. And mm-hmm. I really want to just dive right in with kind of how you're helping people right now. And of course we'll, we'll dig in and kind of talk about some, some things that, that okay. led you to that point as well. So give people a taste of, of what that even means to, to help these folks during okay. times of transition. Okay. Well, my whole foundation is if you're going to own a business, it needs to be what you want, what makes you happy. So I always tell my clients, it's your business and you can make it anything you want. And I see so many people that just start a business and do what everybody else is doing. And maybe they're making a lot of money, but they're miserable and they wonder why. I'm like, ah, because you didn't build the business you wanted. So some of my clients are people like that who own a successful business. They have all the money they want and need, but they're just not happy. So with them, I might go in and help them tweak the business, pivot. I might help them figure out a way that they can develop strategic partnerships with other businesses so that they can branch off in new directions, or it might be philanthropic alliances, cause marketing, things like that, 
or it could even be just where they work from. I want to be able to work from anywhere. So I want to pivot from what I'm doing to this. So that's the kind of thing I do with existing entrepreneurs. I also work with people who are, have maybe have been laid off or maybe they've taken early retirement and they want to take their lifetime of experience and start a business. So I'll work with them to start at the very beginning. What do you want out of it personally? What do you want out of it? What do you want your life to look like? And then we ease into the actual business part. But I truly think if you're going to start a business, you need to start with what you want out of life and make the business fit that. Yeah, I love that. And and I, w- I want people to make sure that that they don't get confused in terms of the terms we're using and, and how we're, we're talking about this, too, because this isn't this doesn't mean like, oh, you have to be, you know, passionate or this has to be yeah. your hobby that you turn into a business and all of that. But but when you have this filter to things of, OK, what do I want out of life? And whether you have a business or not, I, I hope you're applying that, <laughs> that filter That's and understand right. that that you can make mm-hmm. those choices. Right. Um, yeah. And as a matter of fact, some of my clients, I've helped clients who are employees. I've helped them pivot from one industry to another. People who think their skill set doesn't apply. And I look at it from the bigger picture, business wise. Yes, you do have this experience. You just need to tweak the terminology. So, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. And I'm not talking pie in the sky. You got to love everything you do. But I'll give you a great example. Okay. So, when I was caring for my mother with Alzheimer's, I had always run my business exactly like I wanted to. I don't like to manage people, I hate it. And so I had a small staff and they were all people who could work on their own. They're basically entrepreneurs who work with me, but they were employees. So when I started caring for my mom with Alzheimer's, all of a sudden I had this anxiety attack. Oh my God, I have to have more people because how am I ever going to run my business? So instead of doing what I do with my clients, taking a step back and calmly thinking, okay, I can fire these clients. I can do this. I can do that. I can automate this whatever. So I would be working less and making more. I did 180 degrees from what I should have done, which is what I I hired somebody that I shouldn't have hired. And it was my decision. So it's my fault. But I thought the person was qualified. And and then I ended up hiring three more people. The other three were great. But that one core hire that I made just wasn't a good match. It was a decision made in anxiety. And I literally almost lost my business. I spent the last six months of my mother's life keeping the business from going under because of some things that happened. So that's a great example. Do not make important decisions when you're under the gun for, you know, something major in life, a major life change. Oh, yeah. And that's, I mean, that is the perfect example of, of why you go to a coach, a consultant, a, mm-hmm. hey, this outside perspective, because we all need that mirror, no matter what kind of experience we have in any yeah. industry <laughs> across the That's board. Right. Because we look at ourselves differently because we're not objective when it yeah. comes to ourselves. I look back and I'm going, I cannot believe I made that decision, but I can believe it because of the stressful situation I was in. But yeah, yeah, everybody needs somebody who can slow them down and help them take a step back and look at things from the big picture and analyze it and make a decision instead of just jumping off a cliff like I did. Yeah. And that's, and that's, I mean, that's the, the the most fun I think too, is to be in that position for others to just ask a couple of questions, these clarifying Mm -hmm. questions that they never would have gotten to in a million years because they're like this in their business right. and they don't have time for that. And they can uh-huh. you know, stop and, they, and think. Yeah. They don't allow themselves the grace that they allow other people. You yeah. know, they're like, got to work, got to work. And, you know, with my background, I used to be an accountant decades ago, gave up my CPA license in 96 when I started my web development and business strategy company. But I had owned two other businesses before that that I sold. So when I work with people, I don't just talk and ask questions. I'm looking at the big picture business, everything from financial 
to technology. So, you know, all, I think all of that needs to be taken into consideration. Oh yeah, big time. Give and, and I love an example of of a couple of more examples of of clients because because you do run the gamut, right? On how mm-hmm. you've helped, you help people, you know, sell their business for more than than, than they thought. Or and and give me give me that that example too, because when you're describing how you help folks, yeah. um, and even when we were talking before the call a little bit, you mm-hmm. know, what came up is that a, a lot of times people just don't know why they're frustrated with this mm-hmm. successful business or anything like that because we get mm-hmm. that's another thing we get into right with ourselves is we should right be happy and be fine all uh-huh. the boxes are checked what's going on yeah what's wrong with me why am i not happy yeah, yeah. i'll give you an example now this is not somebody who wasn't happy but it's a real life example of someone who had gone through tragedy and it also shows kind of the way I think, because this was in the late 90s. Yes, the internet existed. I was a web developer. um, But back then, really, the only subscription-based businesses were ISPs and things like that, you know, America Online, yada, yada, yada. So this client, uh, both she and her husband were entrepreneurs. He died of cancer. They didn't have great life insurance. And a lot of people, when you're self-employed, you may not have a lot of savings. Um, she she published a set of technical guides for the industry that she was in. She put out a new volume every couple of years. She couldn't take the books back to print because she'd sold the entire inventory. She had no money. So the obvious thing was first I helped her pre-sell books, you know, to get money to print them. That's not a big deal, but that was not how she did it before. But then I said, why are you still printing books? And she looked at me and she's like, because it's a book. And I'm like, yes, but you can turn it into digital files online and you can constantly update. You can constantly add new products to it instead of the professionals having to wait two to three years. And then you can add add subscription based services. So all of a sudden she went from a traditional book publisher to having a subscription based online business that people could do monthly, quarterly, yearly, or even if it was somebody who wasn't in the profession and just wanted to be able to access the information, they could even do it as short as 24 hours. So we had it that it would fit everybody. And in less than two years, the business was not for sale, but in less than two years, somebody approached and wanted to buy it. And we sold it for 20 times the owner's investment. So And so this was something that literally was going to cease to exist. And then all of a sudden, two years later, not only was it making money, but we got to sell it and make that return. So a lot of people now, if they don't take into account the year that was, because it sold right before the dot-com bubble burst. So if people don't take into account when that was to be like, big deal, you have files online, you know, oh, who cares? But nobody was doing that then. So it's not like I could look around and go, oh, so-and-so, I'm going to steal this idea from them. It literally was, I just looked at a problem and was like, all right, we got to figure out a way that we can use the internet to get around this problem. Yeah. And that's the thing too, is that with that, with that context, that, is still happening today. We are yeah. still doing things, certain industries more so than others, still doing things that could be solved by technology, by the internet, yeah. by digital something, or sometimes it's just a different way of looking at it. But mm-hmm. there are are plenty of people and in industries that still haven't solved this thing. And, it, and it's not necessarily that you know, even it's a dinosaur industry or anything like that. No, it could be a technology that came out last week, right? Yeah, <laughs> you know. Well, and I always tell people because a lot of people think, "Oh, everything has been done on the internet. It's too late for me." I'm like, you know what? With the internet, we're basically like we were with phones when we first had recording machines. <laughs> Voice, like people could first leave messages. You know, you had to have the machine. And I'm like, I mean, I'm 61. So I can remember when some people had party lines, they shared a phone. And so, you know, I tell older people, especially remember when you were a kid, how different the phone was now and how you would have thought, oh, you know, phone's not a big deal. 
entire industries grew up around it, like call centers and things like that. And now we're literally walking around. Everybody has a phone in their back pocket that's basically a computer. And nobody would have ever dreamed, even in the 90s or the early 2000s, nobody would have dreamed of that. So, but they also, so if you look at the evolution of the phone, and so I tell people, look at the internet as being that phone that's still a landline that maybe has an answering machine with it, you know, and really it's only limited by our imagination. Oh, yeah. And and again, I'll make the correlation between <laughs> thinking this way in business, but also in life. Mm-hmm. When you can operate in that expansive mindset and that unknown and yeah. love the unknown, right? And go, yes. you know, you know what? I have no idea what somebody's doing halfway around the world in their basement and creating and coming up with today. I think, I think if anything, the majority of people, at least in the, you know, sort of mainstream area era, because even, you know, 10, 15 years ago, still people, we've created everything, you know, back to the twenties, yeah. back to the 1880s, exactly. right? Yeah. Everyone's like, everything's uh-huh. been made, you know, <laughs> yeah. at least, at least I think as a culture and society, we've gotten away from <laughs> anybody yeah. doing that now. You yeah, know? not uh, quite that bad. Right. But feel, still people think, okay, if I'm going to start an online business, I need to look at everybody else. I'm not saying to not look at other people because, of course, sure. you can look at other people and learn from their successes and failures. But don't get hung up on copying everybody else because you may have something in your head that you don't even know is there that could be life changing. Right. And it, and it, you you won't even realize until you go this direction first. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and I'll tell you, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. I was just going to say I didn't even realize this as far as my thinking until I was probably about 50, but I realized at that point that probably the, a huge part of the reason that I think the way that I do is because my father was blind. So I grew up with this person who couldn't see, but he did everything that he wanted to do. He owned a business. He rode horses. He shot guns. I mean, when I say rode horses, went on 35-mile trail rides, you know, and stuff like that. He played basketball with us. He had a woodworking shop in our basement. He used a lathe. Literally never cut himself. And a a sighted man who came over, wanted to use it, was so worried daddy was going to cut himself, he cut the end of his own finger off, (laughs) you know. So when you grow up with somebody like that, you by osmosis, you realize there's not just one way to do something. You know, I look at daddy, he was kind of like a human Roomba. He's, if he ran against somebody, back up and go a different way, you know? And um, I, I've just realized it's ironically a gift to me. His blindness gave that gift to me of being able to think differently. I love that. You know, so, so much, uh, almost as a, as a, as a tangent a little bit, but to that point, you know, so often we think about the traumas in our life and the, you know, mm-hmm. the things that have affected and stuck in there. And we have these realizations years down the road of like, Oh, that's why I've been self-sabotaging or something else. Stuff. Yeah. I, I love, and I, it, and I, I wish it were talked about even more of of those types of realizations that you just described, because mm-hmm. sometimes those are stuck in there too that we've just operated from. But it's been a positive thing, like, oh, yeah. no wonder I look at the world this way, and it's just, yeah. of course, you, you know. I just thought I was weird. <laughs> you know, I was like, well, why do I, I? I don't. I laugh. I'm like, I don't see dead people, but I do see things other people don't see. <laughs> you know. Um, so of course that's just a joke. But yeah, it it really is. For a long time, I was like, I don't understand why I think differently than other people, and it finally clicked that yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, you know, how can you not think differently if you've grown up in this environment? Oh yeah. Yeah, big time. So, w- walk me through this process. Somebody comes to you. They've they've got a they've got an existing business because that's kind of like your ideal. You help so many different yeah. people. But that sweet spot, like they've got a business. It's up and running. It's been going for years. Uh huh. But they feel they either feel stagnant, like I'm going to throw this thing in the trash tomorrow mm-hmm. because I can't do this anymore. Like I don't and I don't know why. 
what what's that what do you start with them i always start with them as the person what is it that you want out of life not just your business but what do you want out of your life what would your ideal life look like a couple years from now or whatever and as i said not just business but your family where you live the way you work the hours you work um how you work, I can't remember if I already said that, how you work, even down to what you wear, the kind of clothes that you wear, and the type of people that you work with, you know? And for example, a woman that I know sells franchises, and this man bought a franchise, he was very, very successful, but after a few years decided he wanted to sell it, and he realized that he didn't enjoy working with people in this specific industry. It was nothing bad about them, but he was used to a different industry. And I don't want to say the one because people might know, but you know, it was nothing wrong with any of it, but he never got to that place in his mind to think what I even like these people. So I always start with the person and the big picture. And then we start going down into, okay, if this is what you really want, what your ideal life would be like, let's figure out the things that are standing in the way of it now. You know, what is it about your business that is making you not be able to do that? And whether it's making more money or living anywhere or working with different people or not having as many as employees or even being able to grow and scale without hiring people, because there are a lot of people who make good money, but they're killing themselves working. And they're like me. They don't like to have a bunch of people working for them. Um, And so they're like, they don't know how to grow. They think that they're stuck working in their business. And, you know, that's an easier one to solve because you can use the web to create so many products and also automate so many things that it allows you to grow without adding those people. Yeah, I imagine, yeah, then it branches off in so many different directions once Mm -hmm. you kind of get that. Because for some folks... Maybe they're no matter what they're done doing this this business, yeah. and you can help them. Hey, you don't have to throw it in the trap. You don't have to walk yeah. away, <laughs> shut mm-hmm. the doors. Um, it may be five years from now instead of mm-hmm. six months, but yeah, you could get them to a sale or can you know construct their business to a sale yeah. or transition the entire infrastructure so that someone comes in to run everything and you're just Mm -hmm. at the top. Right. Yeah. And I love doing that as well. Um, You probably know that only about 20 to 30% of businesses ever sell. And the ones that do sell go for about half of what the owner thinks they're worth. Now, if you think about the huge wave of people that are going to be retiring over the next 10, 15 years, and the majority of their wealth is tied up in their business, a lot of Uh, business owners don't really have much savings or great retirement plans because they've always assumed they'd sell the business. Most of them have no idea that they're probably not going to be able to sell it. And even if they do, they're not going to get nearly what they think it's worth. So it's like a disaster in the making. I love to work with those people. And instead of just slashing expenses, like most people, if you go to a business broker, they're going to be like, you know, you got to slash everything as much to make the bottom line look as great. Well, people aren't stupid. They know how to look at past years. I concentrate on creating value. I do work on saving money because like I might see that they're using a bunch of different apps when they could be using one, you know, or I might see that they're using some proprietary solution when they could be using open source things like that. So yes, I do save people money, but mostly I look at how can we add value, add real value, new things, recurring income, you know, passive income, that type of thing, because buyers love that. And if you have especially recurring income and passive income, they know when they walk in that that income will continue. I mean, as long as they run the business correctly, but also I help them develop processes and, and systems so that the business isn't as reliant on them. That's one of the main reasons reasons that businesses can't sell is because everything is built around the owner. So that's kind of some of the things that I do with that. Yeah. How how do people even find out about you? Like you because you do so many different things and like, <laughs> you know, like besides just being okay, I'm going through crazy times. Oh, mm-hmm. you need to 
you need to meet, <laughs> you need to meet Lisa, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. because there is, there isn't such a, a, a tangible single, I do this, right? right? Yeah. How do people find out about you and get to you and, and know that they need to have a conversation with you? It's usually just word of mouth. It's through people that I, cause I have a huge network. And so, you know, somebody might be complaining and if they happen to know somebody that I know, Or, I mean, you know, sometimes it's through searching, but usually, like you said, it's such a wide variety of problems that less people find me through search than than they do through my network and referrals and things like that, or podcasts, through my own podcast, as well as guesting on shows like yours. And then, of course, my books. They might pick up my books and then realize that I can help them. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think, yeah, that all just sort of feeds that. Yeah, you know exactly because and I think you. I, I don't want a bunch of clients because I don't want all that infrastructure that I was talking about. I don't want all those employees. I right. love working with several select clients at a time, so that's the way. That's why you know the referrals and everything fit me. Now, if I wanted to hugely scale and hire a bunch of people, I would definitely have to pivot my business and create more systems. And, so, and processes than I already have. So that's another example. My goal isn't to have a huge business. So my business itself, I probably will never sell, but I will sell intellectual property processes that I've developed, you know, things like that, rather than an entire business, because my business is built around me so much. Yeah. Give me, let, let people know before we go any further. Mm-hmm. I want to plug your your show, your two books, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, Boomer Cash Out, I wrote in 2017, and I wrote that specifically for boomers. It, I have people in their 20s read it too, but it's written in layman's terms. It's a very short book on why you have to be using the internet more strategically in your business if you ever want to be able to sell and how you could be using it. So it's not a how-to book. It's more like big picture. These are things to think about what you could be doing. Um, So that's Boomer Cash Out. And then last year, I wrote Disrupt Your Now, which it's the um, Successful Entrepreneur's Guide to Reimagining Your Business and Life. And I wrote, well, the first book I wrote because I was sick and tired of preaching to people, you know, and them going blah, 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 you know, not listening. And I'm like, okay, if I write it down, maybe they'll listen, you know, because it's funny if a client reads something, they they just view it as more important than if you tell it to them. Um, So that's the only reason I wrote Boomer Cash Out. I was sick of talking about it. Um, Disrupt Your Now, I wrote it because I thought it's really sad how many people own businesses and are successful but they're just not happy, you know? And to me, like I said earlier, it's your business and you can make it anything you want. And if you're going to be miserable, just get a job because at least you can walk away from that. You can't just walk away from a business because even if you don't have a bunch of employees, you have clients and people like that that you don't want to leave in the lurch. So that's why I wrote that. And I interviewed 50 entrepreneurs from all over the world, ranging from globally known people like Steve Sims down to a guy who was in prison for 15 years for armed robbery and planned his business, planned his vision on the floor of his cell. So I have a huge variety of people. Everybody can find somebody they can relate to, but it's all short stories, lessons that they've learned and like a key takeaway from each. Yeah. And I'm I'm loving it. I'm, I'm, getting through getting through getting through it like like i'm getting through it like yeah. i'm the slowest reader on the planet so if you'd made an audio i'd be audio version of it yet i would be done with it by now but yeah i'm loving <laughs> that's it that's on my to-do list <laughs> I That's, need to do that. <laughs> next to, you know, item number 98, yeah, right? Yeah, that's right. And then the, your show. Yeah, it's Disrupt Your Now. I go live every Tuesday evening at 7. And I'll tell you, my secret, the reason I go live is because I don't want to do all the work for a, tra- for a traditional podcast of recording and then editing and worrying about whether everything's perfect. And so I had wanted to do one, a show for like three years. And I finally was like, wait a minute. If I do it live, it's out in the wild and I can't worry about it. I can just let go because I'm one of these people. If I can stay at 30,000 feet, 
oh my God, I, I love it. But once I get down in the weeds, I love that too, but I can't get back out because I'll start getting really obsessive about details. And so that's another thing you, you have to understand yourself and where, you know, why your personality and the way that you think, how that affects the kind of work that you do. It took me years to realize that about myself. But so, oh, yeah. yeah, it's live every Tuesday on Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. And then, of course, it stays there forever. And I'm now converting past episodes to a, into a traditional podcast. Oh, perfect. Yeah, it's yeah. such a great, great point to the, you know, understand how you do things. And then yeah. the second part of that, too, is really putting that through the filter that that's your, that's your strength. You know, yeah. most of what you'll discover in that, like, if you shift that from like, oh yeah, I just never, you know, can get mm -hmm. to the, the data side of things or the details or this and that, like, mm -hmm. well, em embrace that strength, own what yeah. you are great at, but then realize, okay, this, these certain things have to happen. So let's make sure that either a person, a system, something is mm -hmm. taking care of that part of it right. as well. And I could have easily just hired somebody, even, you know, somebody virtually hired somebody to record everything and then edit it. And do, but I know myself well enough to know that I would still want to go listen to it. And, and I'm just like, no, I can't do that. I'll lose my mind because I do love details. I love solving problems. But when the problems are too granular, I just can't get back up to where I thrive. Yeah. I and the maybe that comes I think maybe that also comes from the accountant in me. Even though oh. I don't like accounting, I was really good at it. I passed the mm. CPA exam without studying, but I hated oh working in accounting. So it's like my mind, I love those puzzles, but I hate the actual repetitive tasks over and over. Yeah. And when you realize, especially for your own business, that all that time you're spending isn't moving the needle, but like, yeah. whoop, you know, and so exactly. if, yeah. if you zoom out, like you're talking about, it's going to be way more beneficial if I just get a show out there every yeah. week consistently than to go, you know, do yeah. this for the next six months and come out with three episodes. <laughs> yeah, I've got, I've been doing it for 20 years and I'm 20 years. Good Lord, two years, a little over two years. And I have, I don't know, about around a hundred shows, something like awesome. that, you know, but see, it's so easy. The details also are a way to procrastinate because mm. it's so easy to obsess about what mic do you have? what lighting, you know, blah, 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 all this stuff. It's so easy. And my, I've done that as didn't realize it, you know, didn't realize I was obsessing as a way to procrastinate, but that's very common. A lot of people do that. They think yeah. they have to have something perfect and no, just put something out there. Yeah. Yeah. Big time. I want to, mm -hmm. I want to wrap with this, with this one kind of question. So if someone, what, in thinking about your perfect client, your ideal mm -hmm. client, let's say, what's going through their head, what's happening to them mm -hmm. that they can realize, oh, I need to talk to Lisa. Yeah. <laughs> or they're going to go to their friend who's going to recommend to talk to you. Mm -hmm. What's happening in their life that's a, that's a real catalyst for that? Well, probably age-wise, it would be somebody 50 or uh, older. I, I mean, I have clients as young as 21 and I love working with them, but perfect client wise, somebody 50 or older because they don't understand technology and they don't understand how they can use it. And so they're thinking um, usually a combination, but either and um, first of all, how can I find more joy in my business or how can I help more people? you know, philanthropically and have it not take away from my business? How can I be more fulfilled? And then secondly, am I ever going to be able to sell my business? Am I ever going to be able to retire? So those two things, somebody who has an existing business that wants to become, be more fulfilled or help more people um, or, and, or people who want to, who are worried that they might not be able to sell for retirement. Gotcha. That's great. Yeah. And so I hope that they, makes sense. Yeah, for sure. Big time. So how, what's the best way to, to reach out to you? 
Well, my website is lisakipsbrown.com, L-I-S-A-K-I-P-P-S-B-R-O-W-N.com. And I'm Lisa Kips Brown on basically every platform out there. Um, my books are Disrupt Your Now and Boomer Cash App. They're on Amazon. They're also on my site. And go straight to the book page on the site, disruptyournow.com and boomercashout.com. But Lisa Kips Brown is easy. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much for being on here. This is such a blast. Thank you. Thanks. I really enjoyed talking with you. I appreciate it. And we'll see you all next time. Thanks so much for tuning in and being a part of this show. If you want help creating authority building video content or even a client generating show of your own, go to MediaLeadsCo.com and let's connect. I'll talk to you soon on the next Strategy and Action.